I have sat and thought an uncountable amount of times how our universe began. And since it began, does that mean forever is real? Because how does something come from nothing? And even if for an infinite amount of time there was nothing, doesn't that still mean forever is real? Because nothing is also something, right? Infinity is a horrifying topic for a lot of people, and this is exactly why I wanted to talk about it in this new series where I dive into things that I'm curious about. I'm just a random girl who is, admittedly, terrible at math and science, but I'm curious about infinity. What does infinity mean to us finite beings, and is it even real in our tangible reality, or is it just something mathematicians came up with after a night of drinking too much? Hopefully, we can get some answers to our questions of what infinity means, what is it exactly, and why do we care? Okay, so I got a blankie so I could be cozy because this topic is a little heavy. <laughs> The concept of infinity dates back to like literally forever ago and we don't really have a specific date or person to accredit who first theorized about it, but many of the oldest civilizations had come up with this general concept. So we know that the idea of infinity has been around for a very long time and it has been demonstrated through our belief in gods and their infinite life, their infinite knowledge, and their infinite power. And so although we don't know for sure the exact person who came up with the idea of infinity. There are some sources that accredit Greek philosopher Anaximander for being the first person to think about infinity outside of the concept of gods and godly beings. There was also the Greek philosopher Heraclitus who theorized about time being infinite and things never ending, only changing. Time was infinite, it always has and always will be. We are derived from the infinite and time will always continue to go on. Heraclitus believed it is not that things will end, but only change, and that change is constant. Which is interesting because today many mathematicians believe in Murphy's Law, which states that anything that can happen will happen. He believed that the universe began, but before that it was something else entirely, and when it inevitably ends, it will not truly end, but it will change into something else. This draws into Murphy's Law, anything that can happen will happen, because it is fundamentally rooted in the idea of ever-changing matter and things changing, and if everything is constantly changing, changing, then anything that can be, will be. And to further describe this concept, there is also the idea of an apple in a box. If you put an apple in a box, it'll decay, it'll rot, and eventually it'll even turn into little tiny particles of dust. And if you continue to leave it in this box for a plethora of time, for millions of years, eventually it may become an apple again. And eventually it may not only become an apple again, but it may become a million things. It may become a tree, it may become a person, it may become anything. If you put something in a box that has the exact elements that you need to make anything that you need, then eventually those things will happen. So most of us know about the word infinity. It involves anything that never ends and never will. The limitless, the boundless, the everlasting. But for most, me included, which is why I'm making this video, it is a complex concept that is difficult to wrap your head around. And the deeper I went into researching, the more complex it got. But I am going to attempt to crash course this for you in the most simpleton terms because for anyone like me, math is super hard. For this lesson, you may want to pack your bags because we're headed to Hilbert's Hotel. Hilbert's Hotel has infinite rooms and never books out, so luckily they accepted my very last minute booking that I just made for us. 
Hello, I would like to check me and my friend in please. No problem at all. All of our rooms are currently occupied, but we can make space for you because that's like the whole point of our hotel and this skit. So give me one moment, please. Hello, hotel guests. In a short moment, will you all pack your belongings and move into the next room down? So room one, move to room two, room two, move to room three, and so on. And yes, Gary, that means you too. Thank you. Okay, your room should be ready shortly. Please wait in our complimentary hotel chairs. Now, you may be thinking, why not just have her send us to the rooms at the end, you know, at the last room? Since it's infinite, you could always just make more rooms, right? Well, since infinity never ends, that would be impossible because it's an infinite number of rooms. It never ends. So you have to start from one. There is no last room to check someone into. So after we get checked in and we already head to our rooms, imagine that there is an Eras tour concert happening nearby. So naturally, an infinite amount of guests start piling into the lobby, demanding a room by tonight. Now, what would the receptionist do in this situation? An infinite amount of guests have arrived and all of the infinite hotel is occupied. Okay. The training manual prepared you well for this, Susan. No wonder so many receptionists go missing. We just don't get paid enough for this. Okay, hello once again, hotel guests. We need to make some space for new occupants. Will everyone please move to the room, double what your room number is. So will room one move to room two, room 1000 move to room 2000, and room sextillion move to two sextillion. And again, yes, Gary, even you. Having the receptionist move all guests to double their room number allows for all of the odd rooms to be vacant so the new guests can start piling into their new rooms. Now, this is another way to think about infinity. It is not simply one size. It can be multiple different sizes. So you may be thinking that a smaller infinity and a bigger infinity just means you have to scale it up, right? Oh, it might be a bigger scale. Like the infinity between zero and one, if you just do, you know, half, and then a fourth, and then an eighth, and then a sixteenth, and you continue to half and half and half your fractions, you have a small infinity. Or there is another example of circles. If you think of a circle, it has no points, right? A triangle has three points, for example, as a reference. A circle has none, seemingly, right? Well, not exactly. A circle has an infinite number of points. How would you draw a circle if all you could do was make points? You would do a bunch, right? You would go boop, 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 boop. Because if you only had lines and you made big points, it would make kind of like a hexagon or, you know, a rectangle. You would have to do a bunch of different points to make it a smooth circle. And to make it a perfectly smooth circle, you may have to do an infinite number of points. And so you may be thinking of smaller and bigger infinities as maybe a smaller and bigger circle. But if you think of infinity as a cardinality, which is the size of sets, then we would have it being the same size infinity no matter what size circle. So if you have a smaller circle and you center it on the same point of a bigger circle and you draw the radii to each point on both circles, then you would see that you can match every point up with every other point, AKA a one-to-one -one correspondence. And when you have a one-to-one -one correspondence, this means that it's the same size infinity because you can draw a one-to-one -one correspondence between each point. Is this making any sense? So the mathematician who came up with the one-to-one -one correspondence rule of infinities was Georg Cantor. According to the mathematician Georg Cantor, we can use a one-to-one -one correspondence to determine the size of infinities, as I said earlier. This was Cantor's lifelong work, and he was actually pretty much exiled for thinking this and for having the audacity to conclude this because a lot of people just thought he was crazy. They were like, um, no, that doesn't make any sense. You're psycho. Um, <laughs> just like we loved to do. And then it was only until later after he died that other mathematicians were like, no, he might've cooked, like let him cook, you know? 
So we can use a one-to-one -one correspondence to understand the sizes of infinities. So, like I said, infinity has to be thought of as a cardinality to understand how it can be separate sizes. And again, a cardinality is a number that can make up the size of a set. Think of the hotel analogy when an infinite number of new guests arrived. You can think of the new guests in the odd rooms available as the same size infinity because you can draw a direct correlation between the two. You can make a one-to-one -one correspondence, right? Now let's go into real actual numbers. <laughs> it's okay, I'll give you a moment to cry. Let's apply this to real natural numbers. Natural numbers are made up of only positive whole numbers, such as one, two, three, dot, dot, dot. This is an infinity and it lies within another infinity that would include all integers. Integers include all natural numbers and all negative numbers. Because this infinity of natural numbers lies within another infinity of integers, one would conclude that this natural number infinity is smaller than the integer infinity, right? Cause like, it lies within it? Cause it includes natural numbers and negative numbers. So you'd think that the integers were a bigger infinity than the natural numbers, but this is just not the case. So essentially, if we can match up each integer with each natural number, the infinities are the same size. So you might think, how could we do that, right? How could we match up these numbers, these integers and natural numbers? Well, we can match up zero with zero. We can match up one with one, and we can match up negative one with two. We can match up two with three, negative two with four, and so on and so forth. We could do this forever with no interruptions, and therefore, these infinities are the same size. Now let's think about fractions. Call me crazy. <laughs> let's dive into fractions. Yay, everybody loves fractions, right? Well, this wouldn't be as simple, of course, because they're fractions, so why would this be as simple? So to start, we would have to create an infinite set of fractions that makes a rectangle. So we would have to map it out in a rectangle-like form rectangle and we can't just match up each integer going in a straight line because then it would continue on forever right you could always add another one to the denominator of a fraction so we would actually have to go in a sequence of a diagonal in order to match every integer with a fraction in a one-to-one -one correspondence for infinity and this way it's just going to continue forever and ever and ever and ever okay so therefore these infinities are the same size. At this point, we need to address all real numbers, okay? Real numbers include every type of number except for imaginary ones, which I'm not even gonna get into right now because that's a whole other thing and I'm, I'm not gonna do it. But <laughs> mainly what is important about real numbers is that they include irrational numbers. Now, real numbers are impossible to count. They are uncountable, okay? or you could say unlistable, as in they can't be written down because some of the numbers in themselves are infinite and never end. These numbers that never end and are limitless and infinite in their own right are called irrational numbers. It basically means you could never make a fraction out of them that is exactly perfect, like the square root of 2 or pi. They will never be able to be perfectly written out. There will always be another number. We've had Turgon machines that have been made just to see if we can write out all of the real numbers, and we simply cannot because they are uncountable. They will go into the trillions and trillions and trillions, and as far as we know, they never end. Um, so they're unlistable. We can never write them down in their complete form. Now, I am certainly no mathematician, and this one is a bit more difficult to explain, but I think that Dr. James Grime does a great job in a YouTube video I found where he explains much better than I can what is so special about real numbers and why they, in fact, make a bigger infinity than that of integers or natural numbers. Imagine we could list all the decimals. We can't actually, but pretend we can. I'm gonna take the diagonals here. I'm gonna take this number, and this number, and this number, and this number. 
and this number. And I am going to uh, write that down. I'm going to make a whole new number from that one. This is the number I'm going to make. If it has a one, I'm going to change it to a two. And if it has a two uh, or anything else, I will change it to a one. That does not appear on the list because it's not the first number because it's different in the first place. It's not the second number because it's different in the second place. It's not the third number because it's different in the third place. It's not the fourth number because it's different in the fourth place. It's not the fifth number because it's different in the fifth place. You've made a number that's not on that list. And so you can't list all the decimals. And that means it's a whole new type of infinity, a bigger type of infinity. So, as you can see, Real numbers have their own infinity, which is bigger than that of natural numbers and integers. And infinity is really interesting because you can slap one in between anything, theoretically. There are even tiny infinities. There are decimals that are called infinitesimals, which are so, so small that there will be trillions of zeros before the actual number happens because it is so small. It approaches zero so closely, but never quite gets there. Like if we have a yard and we're trying to make it to the end of that yard, and we go half of the way there first, and then we go a quarter of the way there, then we go an eighth of the way there, and then we go a sixteenth of the way there, and so on and so forth, we would never get to the end of that yard because we would continue to take half of what we did last time, and then we would just never quite get there because we would just be taking these teensy little, eensy little steps, and this would just be continuous and never ending and pretty much essentially falling into the pit of hell. See, this is why infinity can be controversial, because in reality, it doesn't really work in that way, and eventually we would walk to the end of the yard. I'm never just gonna be stuck in this infinite loop of not being able to reach the end of the yard. Does infinity exist in tangible life and existence? We don't know. And we don't know because we're too small. We're tiny little finite beings. So we'll never really know. We do see with all of this mathematical evidence that forever does seem to exist. And for some that may be daunting, to me it is exciting and opens a realm of possibilities. And I hope a lot more people feel that way, that it's exciting and shows you that life is ever changing. And just because something ends, it doesn't always mean that it's over. It can just mean that it has shifted in its physical state. Many people do not believe that infinity is really real and instead it is just a situation in mathematics where you could always add another one, you could always add another zero. Although things seem like they cease to exist, I believe most things are infinite in a sense and they're just ever changing. We are made of the universe and we are connected to the universe. We are a part of it and I think that this video is important in telling us that we one day will be one with the universe again and we will be that dust that is floating around in a hundred billion years everything is just going to be dust but i don't think that's going to be the end and maybe even humans will exist again in 500 billion years and you know that dust will form a big bang again and then a new universe will come about and i think it's important to understand that you aren't always going to be you and it is okay to feel like small sometimes and find comfort in feeling small and don't be so attached to the day-to-day -day stressors and to try to take a step back and take a breath and I also think it says a big importance to feeling connected to nature and everything around you nothing is permanent so take in every day and just enjoy life and try to take a deep breath <laughs> Numbers are infinite, right? But they are ever changing. It doesn't go one, 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 right? It goes one, two, three. I hope that you found some takeaways from this video. I hope you learned something new. Let me know if you have any ideas or any topics that you want me to dive into. I could do something that has to do with math. I could do science. I could do history. 
whatever. Um, I'm very intrigued about a lot of things, so I'm sure my videos will be pretty random until I kind of narrow down what I like. I know it's kind of different than my last couple of videos, so yeah, but I thought it was really fun and I feel definitely more knowledgeable. Thank you so much for watching. I love you if you're still here. You are awesome for watching this far in and thank you so much. I hope you guys have a great rest of your infinite existence.